Hey guys, how you doing today? It's Steve on the Guru Brew 2. Today we're going to talk about ActiveX. In the computer world, this term is used a lot and you've probably seen web pages that have popped up and ask you if you want to allow ActiveX controls for a certain function that you're trying to do. And most of the time, you probably just click yes so you can use the application. This can or cannot be a good thing, and I'm going to explain to you what ActiveX is briefly, just give you a quick understanding, and then I'll show you some of the controls that are associated with ActiveX, as well as show you what it looks like to use ActiveX versus not use. All right, so what is ActiveX? ActiveX is a Microsoft product and it goes back to some of the earlier versions of Windows. It allows programming code that's already been written to be reused in other programs. A good example of an ActiveX script or module would be spell checking. You know, spell checking can be used in a word processor. It could be used on the web. It could be used in emails. In different programs, you would still need to do spell checking. And so spell checking is an act of X control. And it's basically a programming module that's already been put together that can be shared out to other applications. So that's what ActiveX is all about. And to demonstrate ActiveX, I'm going to take you to a web page that Microsoft has given as an example for displaying ActiveX filtering versus not showing it. So here on my computer, this is a test web page, if you will. I'm going to go ahead and refresh it. And ActiveX is currently active. And you can see that I've got banners here, moving banners. And I've got a little video down here, which would work, and spinny, turny things. And the more active X controls that you have, the more that you may see. So these little applications and in, in, uh, web graphics are all being done with active X controls. And like I said, Flash and QuickTime Player, those are two of the big ones. And they're, they're convenient and often they're safe if a reputable company has made the control. However, you know, hackers can also write ActiveX controls. And once it gets into your computer, they can actually control your computer just as if they were sitting there by issuing ActiveX controls because it allows you operating system functions. Anyway, let me go ahead and refresh this same page and we'll turn off the ActiveX and it's called ActiveX filtering and it's found under tools. Now, let me add that only these tools are available in Internet Explorer. So you have to have Internet Explorer um, as your web page. Uh, browser to see this function. Anyway, let's go ahead and turn on ActiveX filtering. Let's just make sure. Yep, it's on. Let me go ahead and refresh this page now. And you can see that all these banners have turned into a static JPEG image. And that's their alternative view. You know, the website checks to see if you have ActiveX um, capabilities and if you do it'll show the ActiveX banners and give you all the flashy um, you know banner stuff that you've seen earlier and if you're not capable then they'll just put a static GIF or JPEG or other graphic in its place and sometimes if the web page is not well written it just may have an empty box here like a white box with an X in it so anyway um, Flash is a big one for um, being an ActiveX application, and it uses Microsoft as its uh, base, if you will. So anyway, I wanted to show you um, some of the controls. 
We're inside Internet Explorer right now, and if I click on this gear icon and I select Manage Add-ons, add-ons typically will be ActiveX, and I can click on these helper applications like this shockwave flash object you can see it's active x in type so if i turn off the active x control if i filter adobe systems flash shockwave player it's not going to work okay not all of them in this list are active x controls you can see when i click down through these some are there's another one that's the quick time player and also located in this manage add-ons you can see that there's a drop down here that shows controls that i've downloaded that didn't come with windows and if i select that you can see that there's a web diginet control here and that's actually my security software and i remember accepting you know the activex control um yes or no that came up as well as the shock flash object here and both of these as you can see are active x controls if i click on this button and i go to currently loaded you can see that uh, the ones that are enabled and disabled and you can actually disable what, whatever ones you want that's a little beyond the scope of this video but uh, i just wanted to show you how you could come in here and look at uh, what's running with permissions and without permissions you can see this says run without permissions so these activex controls have already been verified or okayed by me or whoever used this computer um as as a safe activex but you know if you come in here um to the downloaded ones these are all ones that i probably said okay and run anyway if you want to be safe and you're paranoid about active x or you got an acting up computer and it's not working right you can always go into the tools in internet explorer and turn on or off your active x filtering and it's just uh one of those settings that you probably shouldn't mess around with because it's uh it's already set up to be as secure as possible and if you get a pop-up and it asks for ActiveX control permission and you give it permission, it's not going to ask you again unless you go into this tool area and turn it off and it can use your computer basically whenever it wants. So that's why it's important to have only um, reputable ActiveX controllers like Flash Player installed as a... Uh, means of not asking permission i know it's a little confusing but uh hopefully i got my point across what active x is and it's it's uh it's just that it's little programs in your computer that uh share applications instead of writing the code twice so anyway leave me your comments below and uh, we'll see you next time I just wanted to take a moment out to thank those that put money in our tip jar here on the Guru Brew. You know, sometimes when you go in and you ask me questions and it helps you out, you put money in there. And I just wanted you to know that it's appreciated for those that did. Don't feel obligated to send us money, but if you'd like to, it is appreciated. And we use the money for upcoming shows and equipment to bring more shows to you. So I just wanted to publicly thank you for your generous donations. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please leave us a thumbs up and a comment if you wish. If you have your own question that you would like answered, please head over to the GuruBrewShow.com website, click on the Ask a Tech link and leave a question and maybe we'll answer it in an upcoming show. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.